This just cannot be true. This is crazy, guys. You don't have any idea what I'm talking about, but you will find out right away. First, please allow me to say hello and welcome back to a new Bleeding Edge Beam Voice tutorial. My name is Petru and today I'm going to share something really crazy about this amazing community. You are going to witness how much an open source project can change overnight. Literally, this changed since yesterday and today. All these things I'm going to show you have been implemented today. This is crazy. You definitely do not want to miss this. All right, cool. Now let's just cut to the chase. Ideas, right? What else? No, it's not only ideas. You are going to see pretty soon, but this is a part of the update. So what you can see here, it's a report an IDS report that you get generated by Blender Beam. So when you run an IDS against one of your IFC models, you will get a report. And this is the report. This is an offline HTML page, a local host that you can open and have an overview over the issues. But this is a problem with this. This is very basic. It's still amazing that you can see this, of course, but it's still very basic compared to the one that we are going to look at pretty soon. So what's happening here actually? So the long story short, this percentage right here is not very reliable and is not actually showing you what you think it's showing you. I think it's going to be much easier to see that, to understand better when we get to see the next ideas. But uh, of course, as you know, if you click on these tests in passed or failed, you will see what happened here and it's actually pretty easy to spot we can see that the property value ei60 does not match the requirement and so on right this is how it looks right now now let me show you something else if i go to blender beam this menu right here in the quality and coordination tab and ifc tester this is where i checked my ifc file with my ideas and when you click on execute ifc tester then this HTML page gets generated, right? And then you can see that now, thanks to Carlos from Brazil, who's doing an amazing job at promoting OpenBeam, he created this. And it's very cool that we can see also here. Now you don't really need to leave the window and go to see this. But to be honest, personally, right now, I still prefer the browser because it's a bit clearer. You don't get missed in all these details here. It's a bit overwhelming with information if you are looking here, if you are reading it from here. But uh, here it's clearer to have a look. But then you can also do more things. That's the good part because now uh, what I did, you can see here, if we look at fail, at the test that did not went through. And if I click on this icon right here on the right hand side, we will see all the errors, right? But unfortunately, you cannot do much with them right now. You can see, and it's a bit confusing. These names here, these numbers are also a bit confusing. And I think this is the number of the test, right? Which is, yeah, it's not very relevant because it's a bit uh, confusing, to be honest, for me at least. Then what I did, I exported this BCF and then I imported it here. But again, and this, unfortunately, right now, you can just see the global ID and the description of this but it doesn't do much or it was not doing so much before right now this is how it looked yesterday 31st of august this interface and this report now let's have a look and see how it looks today 1st of september and now you will understand why i was so excited <laughs> at the beginning of this video okay to do that i will need to update my blender beam version so let me do this and we can see that we got this updated and if i do a git log we will see when this was last time updated and it was today around uh, 11 my time i guess or i don't know no 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 it's not my time it's uh, gtm plus five maybe sydney time but yeah now should be okay let's have a look i think i need to restart blender beam just to make sure that everything will work now let's see how this goes yes i don't need to load my model but i want to load it because i want to see if uh, the bcf works so i'll go and load this file by the way these files are from statsvig from their examples for companies who are uh, working on their projects so they are uh, meant to be quite high uh, quality with a lot of details i just downloaded it from their website so thank you for having this 
I'll try to build this around it. Now I loaded this model. I'll go here and let's run. By the way, if you don't see anything, I'll just select uh, something and zoom to it. So you can see that I, we actually we have a project here, although it's not necessary to run the ideas, right? But now the cool part with this is that if I check this uh, checkbox right here, load from memory, bang, it will automatically load this file that I just loaded, right? So that's cool. I want to generate this report. Now I will load my ideas file and I will grab it from here. All right, and now let's click on the execute IFC tester. Voila, okay, so this is what I'm talking about. The first thing that you are going to see here is the summary. And this is accurate, right? In total, we get a summary. We have five specifications and only one passed. Requirements in these specifications, in total we have nine and only four of them passed. And as you know, we can have more requirements in one specification. Here is the number of checks. So in total, we checked almost 1,300 checks and close to 50%, yeah, 43% passed, right? 550. When we go further down, we can see more details here as well. Now we cannot click on this pass anymore. We can see what is checking here, applicability. It tells us to which elements it applies to, right? And in this case, all IFC slab data. And what is the requirement here? That the fire rating data shall be provided in the data set pset slab common. And we can see that I cannot click on this. Uh, I don't know if it's a bug. Okay, but it works for this. Now, if we go for the ones that have failed, that all the data should have this, we can see that this is much better structured compared to this. You see here, it's a bit difficult to read. I, I really like how this looks here. It's much easier for the eye to read and so on. But there is one thing I think that I would like here. I think personally, I would like to see the warning at the beginning or maybe to have the option to change these columns in this table. But I think the warning should be nice to see it at the beginning because all the time I look at the first row and I expect to see what is wrong with this, right? This is one of the things. And again, you see, it's quite clear to read this. You can also print it to a PDF if you want your page, right? Here we can see applicability, all IFC wall data, elements with uh, is external data or enumeration true. In the data set, P set co wall common again. And we can see here that the property set does not contain the required property. That makes definitely sense. Now we can see also something that it has mix, uh, mixed values, but yeah, we cannot expand on the passes. So I think that's okay because we need to look actually at the issues, not at what it works. Uh, if you want to validate that, then you can just uh, check the model, right? So cool. Now let's see what else has changed here. Let's go to our model. And now what do we see here? We see the report here, right? Fire rating present. We see this one here also. Let's expand. These are the specifications, the five specifications. You remember? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, exactly. These are the specifications. And let's take this one uh, or this one doesn't matter. Here we see errors are here. And again, we can click on this symbol right here and we are going to see the list with the elements that are actually checked here. And you might remember from the previous version that here was a bit difficult to read anything. But right now we can see that it still has this number. Maybe it's useful. I guess Dion mentioned that that's needed for some type check or something like that. But it's much better structured. You can also see that it's an IFC slab. And I don't know, this is a code or something. But before that, let me actually show you. Let's take this one first one and let's click on this. What? Do you see? This is actually huge. This is why I was so pumped at the beginning. Because now you can select also the objects here. And that's very, very, very cool. Uh, because now I can go there and see, okay, what is that? Let's go back. What was it? AHG001. Yeah, we can see that the name is the name. This is the name of this uh, slab. Yeah, well, I don't know. Um, maybe it's according to some requirements. So I don't know exactly what that means. But this is what happens. Now, let's see the next step, which is this. Export to BCF, right? 
I don't know if this BCF is going to work with other BCF servers or with other IFC viewers to import them, but it works with Blender BIM with this version. So let's look here. Stats big rib IDS check one. Oh, there was an error. Should I type in BCF? BCF. Let's try that. I don't think so though. Yeah, actually I did not get the error anymore. Yeah, so it looks like this crashed again, but that's okay. Let's see if we can find it. We have a BCF here. Let's see what it happens if we load it. All right, I don't know what that error is, but I will report it to the end. So maybe he'll fix it afterwards. Until then, let's see what happens now, right? Because, okay, I let's say that I don't want to run this. I keep these issues, right? I have this BCF as a report and I want to check if anything was, uh, I don't know for what purpose, because it doesn't really make sense. You use the IDS again to check if it was uh, fixed or not. Let's see this. What is happening with this? Nothing happens when I double click on it, but I'm not sure if this is how it's supposed to work. Because I remember that today when Dion showed me this functionality, there was a camera and you were redirected to that uh, viewport. Oh, maybe I need to click here. I don't know how to use this properly, guys. So sorry about that. I guess I would leave it at this. A new amazing day in the realm of open source for AAC, guys. This is amazing. I must confess to you that I'm very, very grateful to be part of this community, to witness this and to get the privilege to use these tools. Because you might be surprised, but actually these tools are really saving me a lot of time because there are no other tools doing this. I definitely encourage you to have a look at it and test it for yourself because it works and it can save you a lot of time. Thank you for hanging in and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.